Hi booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome to the Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with my May 2022 TBR. Say it with me everybody, it's TBR time, yay! <laughs> so this is different than what you guys are used to seeing from me. Um, you're used to seeing these ridiculously huge TBRs and you know I know full well I'm never getting to all of the books. What I've been noticing, obviously, is that there are certain books that I've really wanted to get to, and then I think I have all this time, like all of us do, and then the end of the month rolls around, and you're like, oh, cripes, I didn't get to those books that I really wanted to get to. So what I've done is I still created my ridiculously huge 50-plus <coughs> book TBR, but I cherry-picked 12 books that I really want to get to in the month of May. So I'm going to talk about those 12 books and just those 12 books because those are the ones that I definitely want to read. So not only is this TBR being changed around by the fact that I'm only sharing with you guys 12 books, essentially it is going to be um, uh, four books that I have on like my backlist. Like so four books that have already come out via NetGalley that I really want to get to. And then I have the six new releases that I'm super excited about, again, from NetGalley that are all coming out in May that I want to read, of course, so I can read and review them for you. And then the last two books are actually going to be my TBR um, bingo board picks for the month. So yeah, so those will be the 12 books. On top of that, so this is how this is, this is how my TBRs are now going to work. And I'm really, really excited. So don't fret, the TBR wheel is still going to be a thing. So every Friday I've been doing these videos for the past month where I sit down and I spin this wheel and I pick three books and then you guys pick a book for me to read in that coming week. So when I sat down and got thinking about how I wanted to do my TBR, how I wanted to make it much more manageable, so I'm getting to a lot of the books that I want to really get to, um, I realize that I have been reading on average about 20 books a month, which is pretty freaking good. That's about five books a week, roughly. So when I sat down and looked at my TBR stuff, I'm like, okay, so if I pick 12 books, that is three books a week. If, if you think in your head, each month has four weeks, some there's a couple of extra days here and there. We're not going to split hairs that way. Each month roughly has four weeks. So I have my little TBR mug here uh, that I got from the lovely Ashley over at Ash Hearts Books. It says, Shh, I'm counting, and the cat is knitting, and that completely appeals to me. So I wrote down all 12 books, and they are on pieces of paper in here. So how this is going to work is, starting next, this coming Sunday, so this video is, this is Sunday the 24th, so this is a week before the 1st of May. So starting on the 1st of May, for that vlog that's going to start on the 1st of May, I'm going to sit down when I do my Sunday clip, my opening clip for the vlog, I'm going to sit down, out is going to come this jar, and I'm going to pull three books from this jar. So those three books are going to get read that week. On top of that, I am also going to be reading one of my throwback books, whether it be one of the Babysitter's Club books, the Nancy Drew, the Sweet Valley, whatever. One of those books. So that takes me to four books for the week, right? The other book that is going to get picked is going to be the Friday before. Um, I'm going to, again, do my usual video. But so essentially the video that you guys will see on this channel tomorrow will be May picks. But they won't be books out of this jar. They will be all the other books that are not in the jar. So you guys can pick one of those. So it'll be like an extra book. So I'll be like three books that I really want to get to in the month. Uh, a throwback book because you guys know that I love reading those Babysitter's Club and Sweet Valley books and all that stuff. And then just a random book from my TBR. Now, let's say I have a really great reading week and I get through all of those books. Then I'm just going to, for funsies, spin the wheel again and just pick another book and read it. So that's pretty much what's going to end up happening. And I am so excited about it because it kind of lets me do like you know, little mini TBRs every week, um, along with, of course, the monthly ones. So because I'm only going to be talking about 12 books today, you guys, I'm going to talk more about them and I'm going to read a bit of the back of the books for you guys for these 12 books that are now on my TBR. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, something different. We'll see how it goes. Cause I, I, the idea really sort of came to me yesterday when I was at the library and I was looking at books and I 
picked four books and I just thought to myself as I had these four books in my hands, what if I just like came to the library every week, picked four books and read them, you know, like as a random TBR kind of a thing. And then that's what kind of started to drive this idea of just doing it this way, right? So um, a part of me kind of wants to do that too and just add one of those like library books in every week too. So we shall see. I don't want to overwhelm myself too much. We shall see how well I do in terms of the reading. I have a feeling that by um, lowering down the expectation, if you will, that, oh my God, I have to get to all these books. Instead, just saying, oh, I just need to get to these 12 books this month. It will actually, because I think when we get overwhelmed, we tend to be like, all right, I'm not going to do it now. I'm just too overwhelmed. I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? Like for some people, some people's personalities, it's like they get overwhelmed and they're go, 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 go. I'm one of those people who gets overwhelmed and it's kind of like, okay, I mentally just kind of like, I don't know if I can do this right now. And it's only reading at the end of the day, you guys. And I know I shouldn't stress about it. And we're not here to keep up with the Joneses. But anyway, I've been rambling on already for like five minutes. Let's get into the books that I picked to go in the jar. So the first one, we have Bride for a Day by Carolyn Brown. Um, again, this is one I have from NetGalley. I'm very excited about it. I'm a huge fan of Carolyn Brown. I love the cover of this book. So let me read the back. Cassie O'Malley is a woman on the run when she gets tangled up with a suspicious local sheriff and on the spur of the moment turns to a handsome stranger to get herself out of a tight spot. Ted Wellman didn't go, go to town to get hitched, but that sweet girl with the big green eyes looked desperate. Suddenly he finds himself married to a stranger. No problem. His uncle's a lawyer and everyone knows he has no emotional connection to settle down. Not since the death of his brother put him on an emotional lockdown. Much to his surprise, instead of helping get out of it, Ted's family, Ted's crazy family, it says, seems determined to keep him and Cassie together. Doesn't that sound delightful? <laughs> Marriage of convenience story. I mean, Carolyn Brown's books lately have definitely edged more towards the women's fiction side of the spectrum. Like if you were looking at romance and women's fiction and, and chiclet and all those things. But this one definitely sounds much more like a romance and I'm here for it. I cannot wait. The next one is The Shore House by Heidi Hostetler. This one I think is definitely a women's fiction novel. It looks really cute. When the Bennett family arrive at the Shore House to spend their, the summer together, they bring more than they bring more baggage than just suitcases. <laughs> when Kay Bennett, matriarch of the Bennett family, summons her adult children to the Shore House, she anticipates a vacation full of nostalgia. It's a chance to relieve the carefree joy of summer's past, basking in the hot sun, cooling off in the surf, and enjoying long, relaxing evening evenings, watching fireflies on the deck. But when Kay's son and daughter arrive, late and uncooperative, it becomes clear that the family desperately needs to reconnect. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Sounds really good. Again, a women's fiction novel takes place in the summer. I think we're just all in that headspace right now. It's like, give me all the spring and summer books. You know what I mean? Um, the next one I have here, <laughs> a little bit of the opposite of the whole spring and summer thing, but I have been really excited about reading this one and I decided it's time to get to it. And we have The Arctic Curry Club by Danny Reed. So it says, Soon after upending her life to accompany her boyfriend Ryan to the Arctic, Maya realizes it's, all, it's not all northern lights and husky sleigh rides. Instead, she's facing sub-zero temperatures, 24-hour darkness, crippling anxiety, and a distant boyfriend as a result. In her loneliest moment, Maya opens her late mother's recipe book and cooks Indian food for the first time. Through this, she confides her unexpectedly, through this, her confidence, excuse me, unexpectedly grows. She makes friends, secures a job as a chef, and life in the Arctic no longer freezes her with fear. But there's a cost. The aromatic cuisine rekindles memories of her energetic mother and her childhood in, Bang in Bangalore. I think that's how you say it. Can Maya face the past and forge a future for herself in this new town? After all, there's now a high demand for the curry club in the Arctic and just one person with the know-how to run it. Doesn't that sound delightful? Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I cannot wait to read this book. And this is a newer one that I got from NetGalley. I think it came out in April or March, but I actually have this as a audio arc from NetGalley and I have it downloaded on my phone, so I'm really excited to listen to it. 
So this is The Family She Never Met by Caridad uh, Panino, I believe is how you say the author's name. Jessica Russo knows nothing about her mother's family or her Cuban culture. Every time she's asked about, she's asked about it, her mother has shut down. But when the Cuban grandmother she's never met sends her right-hand man, Louis, to offer Jessica the chance to come to Miami and meet her estranged family, she can't help but say yes, even when she knows it will pain her mother. I, that's all I'm going to read. That just sounds really good. Rediscovering who you are, where you come from, your family. I just, this one sounds so, so, so good. And I cannot wait. So the next six books here we have are all new releases in May. I cannot wait. I am super excited about all of them. So let's jump into it. The first one, oh, the first book in this series, I gave five stars to, and I'm really hopeful for the second one. So we have the Book Woman's Daughter by Kim Michelle Richardson. This is the second book in the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek series. Like I said, I read book one a couple years ago, gave it five stars. It says, best-selling historical fiction author Kim Michelle Richardson is back with the perfect book club read following Honey, Mary, Angeline Lovett, the daughter of the beloved Troublesome Book Woman, who must fight for her own independence with the help of the woman who guide her and the books that set her free. In the ruggedness of the beautiful Kentucky mountains, Honey Lovett has always known that the old ways can make life harder. As the daughter of the famed blue-skinned Troublesome Creek pack horse librarian, Honey and her family have been hiding from the law all her life. But when her mother and father are imprisoned, Honey realizes she must fight to stay free or risk being sent away for good. This sounds so good. Like I said, I love the first book. Cannot wait for this one. Speaking of brilliant historical uh, fiction novels, I am so excited about this one too. I have not read a bad book by this author. Our Last Days in Barcelona by the great Chanel Clayton. Oh, I cannot wait. I was so thrilled when I was approved for this one on NetGalley. When Isabel Perez travels, travels to Barcelona to save her sister Beatrice, she discovers a shocking family secret. Barcelona, 1964. Exiled from Cuba after the revolution, Isabel Perez has learned to guard her heart and protect her family at all costs. After Isabel's sister Beatrice disappears in Barcelona, Isabel goes to Spain in search for her. Joining forces with an unlikely ally thrusts Isabel into her sister's dangerous world of espionage, but it's an unearthed piece of family history that transforms Isabel's life. Ah, and then... Barcelona, 1936. Alicia Perez arrives in Barcelona after a difficult voyage from Cuba, her marriage in jeopardy and her young daughter Isabel in tow. Violence brews in Spain, the country is on the brink of civil war, and the rise of fascism threatening the world. When Cubans journey to Spain to join the International Brigade, Brig Brigade excuse me, Alicia's past comes back to haunt her as she unexpectedly is as she is unexpectedly reunited with the man who once held her heart. A historical fiction not set in World War II. I'm down for it. I'm here. <laughs> I'm so excited about this one. I think this comes out right at the beginning of the month. So depending on when I pull it from the jar, this might end up being one that I use a credit for on Audible because I have listened to her other books narrated and they're just beautiful. So I'm hoping that this one will be more of the same. Now for something a little bit different. We have Beach House Summer by the always delightful Sarah Morgan. Love Sarah Morgan. Yay. So when Joanna Whitman's famous ex-husband dies in a car accident, she doesn't know what to feel. Their dysfunctional marriage held more painful secrets than she cares to remember. But when she discovers that the young woman with him in the crash is pregnant, Joanna feels compelled to act, knowing exactly how brutal the media spotlight will be on celebrity chef Cliff Whitman's ex-wife and his mysterious female friend. Ashley Blake can't believe it when Joanna shows up in her hospital room and suggests they hide away at her beach house on a sleepy stretch of California coast. Joanna should be hating her, not helping her. But alone and pregnant, Ashley can't turn down Joanna's offer. Yet she knows that if Joanna ever found out the real reason Ashley was in that car, their tentative bond would shatter instantly. That's all I'm going to read. That's just, yes, 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 Sarah Morgan. I can't wait. This one sounds so good. Yay. All right, next up. An author that I am extremely familiar with for her Amish books. But this is not an Amish book. And I'm very intrigued and cannot wait to read it. 
The View from Coral Cove by Amy Clipston. In the wake of a broken engagement and the death of her last surviving family member, romance novelist Maya Reynolds moves to the haven of Coral Cove, North Carolina, to take over her great aunt's toy store. Some of her grief is immediately eased by uh, imaginative eight-year-old Ashlyn Tanner, who talks her into adopting a kitten and inspires Maya to create a princess tea room in the store. Ashlyn's dad, local veterinarian, who doesn't love a good veterinarian, Brody Tanner is quickly smitten by the newest residence, resident of his hometown. As a single parent, he sacrifices a lot in order to give Ashlyn the world, so a romantic entanglement with Maya is not a distraction he's looking for. So it's their romance. That's all I'm going to read. It sounds delightful. Again, I'm a big fan of Amy Clipston's work for her Amish fiction. So my assumption is that this is going to be definitely more of a Christian fiction, inspirational type romance. But I'm here for it and I cannot wait to read it. I was so thrilled when I was approved for this book, not only on the eARC, but also the e-audio book. So I have this to listen to on audio and I cannot wait it's not summer without a new Mary Kay Andrews book. The Homewreckers by Mary Kay Andrews. Yay! Hattie uh, went to work helping clean up restored homes for Kavanaugh and Son Restoration at 18. Married the boss's son at 20 and was only 25 when her husband Hank was killed in a motorcycle accident. Brokenhearted but determined to continue the business of their dreams, she takes the life insurance money, buys a small house in a gentrifying neighborhood, flips it, then puts the money into her next project. But that house is a disaster and a money loser, which rocks her confidence for years to come. Then Hattie gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, star in a beach house renovation reality show called The Homewreckers, cast against a male lead who may be a love interest or may be the ultimate antagonist. It's a question of who will flip and who will flop, and will Hattie ever get her happily ever after? <laughs> house flipping house flipping i just i i i i can't wait i love it it sounds so good um next one i was also this okay so i've heard about this book quite a bit on bookstagram and because a lot of the people i follow on bookstagram have read this one even though it's a ya and i'm not huge into the ya and you guys know that but for me summer just feels like a time to read a ya contemporary do you know what i mean so I saw this one and then I saw it on NetGalley as an audio arc and I'm like, I probably won't get approved for it, but I tried anyway and I was. So yay, I'm going to read it in May. I Kissed Cheryl Wheeler by Casey, is it McQuestion? I think that's how you say her name. Chloe Green is so close to winning. After her mom's moved from her Southern California, moved, moved her from Southern California to Alabama for high school. She spent the past four years dodging gossipy classmates and a uh, periodical administration at the Willow Grove Christian Academy. The thing that's kept her going, winning valedictorian, her only rival, prom queen, Shara Wheeler, the principal's perfect prodigy. But a month before graduation, Shara kisses Chloe and vanishes. On a furious hunt for answers, Chloe discovers she's not the only one Shara kissed. There's also Smith, Shara's longtime quarterback sweetheart, and Rory, Shara's bad boy neighbor with a crush. The three have nothing in common except Shara and the annoyingly cryptic notes she left behind. But together they must untangle Shara's trailer of Shara's trail, say that three times fast, of clues and find her. It'll be worth it. If Chloe can drag Shara back before graduation to beat her fair and square. <laughs> like I said, I've heard a lot of people talk about this book and I'm like, usually I don't jump on the hype train, but this one just sounds really cute. I don't typically read a lot of YA. Con I don't typically read a lot of YA, period. But this one sounded really cute, so I thought I would go ahead and give it a try. And the last two books I want to share with you guys are the ones for TBR Bingo. So I announced the numbers in my last video. We had book number 24. So book number 24 on my bingo board was The Little Orchard on the Lane by Tilly Tennant. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Tilly Tennant. Cannot wait for this one. When 27-year-old Posey arrives at Picture Perfect Oleander House in the Somerset village of Astrocombe, she is enchanted. Adopted when she was just a baby, Posey is excited to reconnect with her birth family and help out the and help out 
on the family cider farm with its own old stone walls and bees buzzing in the hedgerows. There's just one tiny problem. Her new next door neighbor, haughty, handsome vineyard owner, Le Lanchlin, I think, L-A-C-H-L-A-N, Lanchlin, has taken an instant dislike to Posey. And after a furious argument when she ventures on his land, she's pretty certain there's not a heart of gold beneath his frosty exterior. So I'm just going to read that because it's a long, like, back of the book. But it's obviously the romance between the two of them. It's Tilly Tennant. She's lovely. I cannot wait. This will also probably focus a lot on the whole adoption with her spending time with her birth family. Because Tilly Tennant does do a nice mix of romance along with women's fiction. So yeah, these are great chiclet novels. I love them so much. And the final book, cheers, sip of tea, coffee. In spot number 12 on my bingo board was If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. This is the first book in the Meant to Be series. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one. It's made the rounds on Bookstagram, on book two. I'm excited. After having just graduated with a degree in shoe design and trying to get her feet on the ground, Cindy, because of course this is a retelling or a reimagining of Cinderella, is working for her stepmother, who happens to be the executive producer of, um, of America's favorite reality show, Before Midnight. When a spot on the show needs filling, ASAP Cindy volunteers, hoping it might help jumpstart her fashion career, or at least give her something to do while her peers land jobs in the world of high fashion. Turns out being the only plus size woman on a reality dating competition makes a splash. And soon Cindy becomes a body positivity icon for women everywhere. What she doesn't expect that she may find inspiration and love in the process. Ultimately, Cindy learns that if the shoe doesn't fit, maybe it's time to design your own. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I love a good retelling. Um, so this meant to be series, to my understanding, is going to be retellings of classic fairy tales. And I think, don't quote me on this, I think th these books are put out by Disney Studios or a subsidiary of Disney or something like that. So yeah, I'm excited. This one sounds really, really good and I cannot wait to read it. So guys, those are the 12 books that are in my jar. Stay tuned to my weekly um, reading vlogs to find out what book I'm going to be reading or what books I'm going to be reading every week. So like I said, I'll be picking three of these every week along with a couple of other books that I'm going to get need your help on for those Friday videos. And yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Please let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them or any of them going on your list now that I've talked about them. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.